Well, good day 46ers. It's another week, another game. But I gotta tell you, I got a little beef with you. Here's the deal. I've been doing prizes the last couple weeks. Every week, actually, and no one ever writes me. No one ever really claims there's prizes, except for the kids who have been showing up. They did claim some space cookies, which is great. But you didn't claim your prize. We're going to play a game called Higher or Lower, and if you get them all right, I tell you what, I will share some of my lucky charms with you. But you got to tell me, you got to write me, you got to email me. So get on it. All right, let's play the game. All right, the game we're playing today is called Higher or Lower. You have to guess if the question that I'm asking, if the actual answer is higher or lower. We're going to play, remember, we are playing for Lucky Charms, the best cereal in the world. Well, next to Captain Crunch. Lucky Charms is pretty good because it's magically delicious. Are you ready? First question is, the longest time balancing on a chainsaw on the chin is 932. Ooh, that's a lot of time. What do you think? Higher or lower? Higher or lower? Boom. Less. It's only a minute and 43 seconds. Okay, got you with that one. There we go. Question number two. Are you close to Lucky Charms? The world's longest mustache is 12 feet long. What's your guess? Higher or lower? Closer to the charms. What do you got? 12 foot long mustache. That's really long. It's actually higher. 18.5 feet. That's amazing. If you guessed higher, you're incredible. I wish I had a mustache that long. Next question, number three. The highest jump by a llama is 12 feet, three inches. Two feet, sorry. Two feet, three inches, higher or lower? Llamas can't jump, I don't think. They're like, no, ooh, higher. Three feet, eight inches, I can't believe that. You see the llama almost jump four feet? Amazing. Question number four, closer to Lucky Charms. The most expensive grilled cheese sandwich sold at regular at restaurants is $135. $135 grilled cheese. Have you ever eaten the 135 grilled cheese, higher or lower? Boom. Higher, 214. Man, some of you have never even seen that much money. Last question here for the Lucky Chart for it all. Longest solo dance marathon by yourself is 152 hours. Imagine dancing by yourself, 152 hours. Higher or lower, dancing by yourself. Lower, only 123 hours, which is like five days. That's insane. Well, if you won, uh, got five out of five there. You have to get five out of five to win this. You got five out of five. Write me and I will share with you my lucky charms. Have a great rest of the program. Grades four to sixes. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had a time in your life when you didn't feel very lovable? Like maybe you didn't feel good enough for people to love you or maybe you just felt like people didn't love you. Well, I want to tell you about one time in my life where that happened to me. See, I was starting at a brand new school, and when you're at a new school, you feel nervous, but, but things seemed to be going really good. I thought I was making friends, and kids liked me, and until one day, we had this group time where we were all sharing different things. And I thought, oh good, I'll get to know these kids even more, until one of the girls decided to share this. She said, I just wanted to share that, well, Julie, you thought I liked you since you got here to this school, but I haven't liked you at all. It's like a dagger to my heart. I sat there in the circle of kids, and before I could even say anything, one of the other girls said, yeah, me too. You thought we were friends, but I haven't really liked you at all. And kid after kid after kid in this circle started sharing how much they hadn't liked me since I came to the school. It was probably one of the worst Julie moments in my life. Talk about feeling unlovable. Now, I hope none of you have ever had a situation where all the kids said how much they didn't like you. But you know what? We've all had moments where we don't feel very lovable. Times when we wonder, could anyone really love me? Today, Mr. Darren is going to teach us a little bit from the story of Zacchaeus. And he's going to talk to us a bit about why God's love is so different. Because he loves us 
unconditionally. It's going to be a great day. Do you know how I know it's going to be a great day? Because I am loved and you're loved too. And how do we know that we're loved? We know that we're loved because Jesus came to earth to teach us how to love others and to show us that we are loved. Our story about Zacchaeus this week has a lot to say about that. Let's take a look. I already got my great day clothes on. Our Bible story tells us that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. This would have meant that he was a very unliked man in his community. He'd probably done a lot of bad things, had probably stolen a lot of money from the people that he knew. Maybe you feel like you've done some bad things, sinful things. Maybe you feel like you've done some things you regret. Perhaps you've lied to your parents or to your friends. Maybe you've cheated on a test. Maybe you also have unduly taxed the people in your community. Or maybe you don't feel very good because you feel like you aren't living up to expectations, like you could do more. You feel like you've let people down. I want you to know that Jesus loves you in spite of all of that. He loves us even when we sin. Now, our story also tells us that Zacchaeus ran ahead down the road because he couldn't see where the crowd was. It also says that he climbed a tree. Now, I have wondered, is it possible that Zacchaeus climbed a tree because he didn't want to be at the front of the crowd when he ran ahead? Maybe he could have gotten to the front of the crowd if he got there early enough. But is it possible that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus but didn't want to be seen? Now, as Jesus approached the spot, he went to the tree and he called Zacchaeus down and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to have supper at your place. And this is where things got really interesting. It is not a good day. What if Jesus was coming here for supper? What would I make him? He knows when I've been sleeping. He knows when I'm awake. He knows if I've been bad or good. A plate of cookies and milk is not going to be good enough. Will my friends like Jesus? Will Jesus like my friends? Will my friends tell Jesus stories about what I've done? And what am I going to make? Is my house clean enough? Sour! Mold! Just like my life! Ah! Well, that was intense. I just wanted to share a couple of ideas with uh, you guys this week. And these are thoughts that I had with regards to Sunday school last week, plus what our concept is this week. And that concept is Jesus loves you no matter what. Now, I've made some notes for myself here, and we're just going to roll with this because nothing is perfect. None of us are perfect, and so we're just going to go along through this. Life at your age is hard, trying to figure out how you want to act, who you are, who you want to hang out with, and who you don't want to hang out with. I imagine, you know, as you're trying to figure out your personality and you're learning about yourself, it becomes a bit more difficult because people that you once thought you really liked, maybe you don't. And it's not because they're necessarily bad people, but you're just trying to figure out who you are. That's okay. And I want you to know that Jesus loves us no matter what. We are all sinful people. And this ties into our story with Zacchaeus because when Jesus came and called Zacchaeus down, it was a tough time, I'm sure. There was a lot of people who couldn't believe that Jesus would spend any time or have any thought for, okay, that was Mr. Darcy, my cat. I mentioned him last week. He just came walking across the picture, but let's keep going. When we talked last week about Jesus understands your story, I had a great time sitting at the table with the fellas there, uh, my young brothers. And if you're any there today, I'm saying hi to you. It was really great to talk silly and for us to, to share some good time stories. I mean, especially body checking sheep. There's a good story there for some of you. But the part that really made it cool is when we opened up and shared some of our honest weaknesses, I would say, and our worst times in our life. 
lives. Um, in a world of Facebook and Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is you guys use or, or seeing other people, one thing that you really, okay, you know, that's Kim who's, yeah, many of you have met her in Sunday school just wandering through the frame. Many of you, I'm sure, will see others online and you go, boy, life looks perfect. Everything seems like it's working out great, but that's only the image they're showing you. And the biggest thing that we can all understand is no one is perfect, nothing's perfect. And really, we just have to be willing to love and accept and understand others broken like we are. Now, so how can we deal with our feelings of not being adequate or not being good enough? And I've, I've made a few notes here, just three small things or for those girls who were with me at the start of last week, what did we say, one, two, three, if you're German. The first is this, and I wrote this down. It's from Romans 5, 8, and it says that God demonstrates his love for us in this way. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. So right away, we've got to understand that God accepts us the way we are as broken people. That's why he came to help us not because of any good things we did, but because he loves us and recognized that we were a broken people who needed a savior. The second thing would be this. If you're feeling like you're not adequate or good enough, recognize that God came, as I said in the first point, he loves you. But second, talk to God. I would say, name your problem to him. He wants to hear us. He wants to be part of our lives and he wants to have a relationship with us. And opening up to him can really help you to understand yourself and recognize his love. Ask for help to understand yourself and to get good direction. And then third, I would say, look around and recognize the good people around you that you can learn from. And that could be parents, that could be teachers, that could be your people teaching you Sunday school. Learn from them and recognize the good things in them you like, but then also recognize that they are also broken people, just like the people you go to school with. And so have compassion and forgiveness for others in the same way that God has forgiveness for us, in the same way that God loves us and came and died for us even while we were still sinners. Now, I'm gonna tie this back into our story of Zacchaeus right now and by, by saying this, and I, I really like this line, in, I got my Bible right here. I also have some chickens that I've, I've carried these for 20 some plus years in my Bible from a Sunday school message that Kelly Sixstrom taught me way, way, way back, probably even 26 years ago. In Luke 19, uh, seven, it says, and this is just after Jesus calls Zacchaeus down under the tree. It says, all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. And I'm here to tell you today, it was surprising for those people that Jesus would hang out with a sinner. What's not surprising for us now because we know the life of Jesus and why he came, that was what he did. He loved to go and hang out with sinners. Nobody expected that. I mean, I've wrote here that what Jesus did was often the unexpected. That's why he bucked the system and was so crazy for what the people who were religious, the religious, religious leaders of the day thought. He would go out of his way to spend time with sinners and broken people. And that right there is what they couldn't understand. So I just wanted to share that message with you, and we're going to check in and see how things are going for the rest of the day. It's a great day in the neighborhood, a great day in the neighborhood. Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because Jesus loves us no matter what. Hi, I was expecting you, but do you know what the people in Jericho weren't expecting? That Jesus would go to Zacchaeus' house. Oh, so here's what we could learn from this. What we need to learn to do is love each other like Jesus loved Zacchaeus, with compassion and forgiveness. And I've also thought, I know what I can make for Jesus for supper. Angel food cake! It makes perfect sense! And you know what? All it says to start with doing is add a bit of water. So I thought I'd get two things done at once. Have a great day, Crossroads kids. It's a great day in the neighborhood, a great day in the neighborhood. Do you know why? Do you know why?
God's love is unconditional. Doesn't matter how big your hurt is. Doesn't matter how big your sin is, or your unkindness, or your, your stealing like Zacchaeus. God's love is bigger. He loves us no matter what. You know, grades four to six is, there's a verse in the Bible, it's one of the most common verses. You probably know it, you've probably heard it. Today, we're gonna do a Lectio on John 3, 16. And here's why. Because if these words could actually get down into our heart, those times when we're you know, feeling terrible because kids are mean to us, or those times when we're feeling guilty because we've done things wrong, those words, if we really believe them, I think they'll change our life. They'll change how we see ourselves and how we can know how God sees us. So, I want you to just quiet your heart and I'm gonna say John 3:16, And we're just gonna pray right now that God's Holy Spirit would speak to us. Maybe there's some hurt in your heart. Maybe there's some, something wrong in your heart, something that you've done that you know is there. And as we speak these words together, let's let God speak to us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but would have eternal life. I'm gonna read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. I'm gonna read it this last time. And as, we, as I say it, I just want you to, um, to really ask God for one word or one thought in your heart of what he wants to say to you. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but will have eternal life. Grades four to six, I'm so glad that you could join with us today. And I love this lesson. God loves us no matter what. It's true. And I'm gonna pray for us now that we would believe it. God, thank you for your love. And it doesn't make sense to us. It's so much bigger than us. But for these grade four to sixes, would they know your love and in the areas of their life where they've been hurt or where they feel like they aren't lovable, would you wash over them with your love today? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, have a great week. We'll see you back here next week.